Hello, my name is Rollo Dilworth, and I'm excited to have this chance to present a Hal Leonard Joyer singing breakout session. For this session, I would like to focus on exercises designed to improve diction. Although much of the material will be presented in a lecture demonstration format, I've tried to create spaces throughout the video for you to participate and try out these exercises on your own. Therefore, there will be times when I won't be singing, but instead I'll be coaching you along and sometimes playing a piano accompaniment as you sing. We will focus the first few exercises on vowel sounds, and then we will transition into connecting consonants to those vowel sounds. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy and have fun. The vowel sounds that we'll be focusing on in this session are the primary ones that are often chosen for warm-up exercises in English diction. Those vowel sounds are A, E, A, O, and U. Repeating A, E, A, O, and U. I have developed some hand signs that will help your singers to remember how to shape those vowels. This is what I use for A. This is what I use for E. This is A. This is our shape for O. And this is our shape for U. So I'll demonstrate them and I'll show you how one shape fluidly moves into the next. So this is A, E, A, O, U. For our first exercise, we're going to practice transitioning between vowel sounds. We're going to start with the A, then to the E, then to the A, then to the O, then to the U. We'll do this all on the same pitch and we will uh, allow four counts for each of the pitches. So it'll sound like this. I'll play piano here. One, two, here we go. I will repeat um, with the hand signs again. One, two, here we go. turn N. Now let's modulate up our step. Here we go. Let's go up another half step. Another half step. Here we go. And one more. Here we go. So now let's do exercise one again, but this time I will just play the accompaniment and I will coach you along. 
to transition from the A to the E to the R to the O and to the U. So we'll do several modulations. Here we go. Here's the A. One, two, ready, good breath. A. Good breath, going up, here we, A, and. Here we go, A, and. Here we go up a half step. A. Let's try one more. Here we go. For the second exercise, we're going to sing the pitches so to do, descending, and what we're going to do is take each of these vowels separately so that it will be like this. <laughs> We're going to keep modulating and as we modulate we're going to alternate and go to the next vowel. What we want to make sure that we do is we keep a very consistent space uh, so that we're not stretching here but we're keeping the same amount of space no matter what vowel that we're going to transition to. Uh, we also want to make sure that again as we inhale we want to think about that vowel shape. So let's try this one. A. Now to the all vowel, to the o vowel breath, to the u vowel. Now back to the a, to the e vowel. To the R, last one, O, so we went through each of those vowels once as we continue to modulate. And what you'll also maybe notice, we start in the key of D major and we worked our way all the way up to the key of B major. So we had nine modulations there. And what that will do is really help the singers to expand uh, the range and really uh, warm up from uh, a low D on the, ex on the first exercise all the way up to uh, high F sharp, which is uh, the top of the staff, which is pretty comfortable for, for most uh, voice ranges, uh, treble voices in particular. Here is exercise number two again, the so to do exercise, alternating vowels. This time I'm just going to play and call out the vowels and help you to breathe and to sing through this on your own. So here we go. One, two, ready, on A. Good breath, E. Good breath, A. Good breath, O. Good breath, U. Back to A. Good breath. Create lots of space, E. Good breath, ah. Oh, good breath. Last one, ooh.
I hope that'll be helpful to you and to your students. For exercise number three, we're going to sing an arpeggio, and we're gonna transition from one vowel to the next as we sing through this arpeggio, like so. Hey, oh. You'll notice that we probably need the most amount of space on the ah vowel, so however much space you're gonna need for the ah to sing that highest pitch in the arpeggio on the, on the fifth, make sure that you create that space at the very outset. Therefore, you don't have to go which is a, a, a common thing that happens with a lot of young developing voices. So what we want to make sure that we do is create that space initially on the inhalation and then sing through and we won't have to make any sort of space adjustments here. For example, Hey, oh. Notice I didn't have to drop my jaw more to get to the ah, okay? So let's try that. One, two, ready, and hey, oh. Good breath. Hey, oh. 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 So we went up to a high G, so we went all the way up to the top of the staff for this particular exercise. You may find that uh, that may be a little bit too high, uh, but we want to make sure again that we expand uh, the, the range and give it a chance, give us a chance to exercise, especially uh, that high uh, head voice. This is the accompaniment only for exercise three. Uh, this is where we're singing a transition between each of the vowels on an arpeggio, and I'm going to sort of coach you through it this time. Again, making sure that we keep the same uh, consistent space uh, as we sing through the arpeggio, especially keeping in mind that ah vowel that we're going to sing on the highest note within the arpeggio. So this is the hey, oh, okay, one, two, ready, and and breath, and breath, space, keep going, hey oh, keep going, and, couple more, Now that we've had a chance to explore some of the common vowel sounds that we use in choral singing, let's now turn our attention to some consonants that we can connect to those vowel sounds. So just to review, we have this e, e, a, o, and u. If we add some consonant sounds to these vowel sounds, um, we can come up with quite a few words, I think, and, or catchphrases. And one of the ones that I like to use to line up with the e, e, a, o, u is the phrase me, we, fa, lo, you. This phrase uh, can be found uh, as an exercise in my first Choir Builders book, and I'd like to uh, use some exercises from that book as well as some extension activities. So we're going to look carefully at how we can connect the m, w, f, l, and y to these vowels to come up with me, we, fa, lo, you. You can do all sorts of rhythm activities with your singers to reinforce these consonant sounds like m, w, f, l, y. And you can um, do it in sort of an echo activity in which the students repeat after you. You can use any combination of, of consonants and I encourage you to use combinations of consonants that you would find in the repertoire that you're going to be using. So if you were going to sing, make a joyful noise, you can do m, j, n, 
as a, a quick echo activity, again, to get your singers to really work the articulators and focus on the consonants as they connect them to the vowel sounds. For this next exercise, exercise number five, we will sing the me, we, fa, lo, you phrase, and we'll do it as a descending so to do exercise. And let's choose uh, staccato articulations for now. And what that will do is really allow your singers to sing those consonants with clarity, but also to sing pitches with clarity. So if you want to make sure that singers are singing accurately with good intonation, use a staccato exercise where there's very little wiggle room to sort of negotiate those, those pitches. Okay, here we go. So we'll sing me, we, follow you. Here we go. One, two, ready, and me, we, follow you. We'll modulate. Me, we, follow you. Keep going. Me, we, follow you. Keep going. Me, we, follow you. Nice. Me, we, follow you. Keep going. Me, we, follow you. Keep going. Me, we, follow you. Now we will do just the accompaniment for the me, we, fa, lo, you, descending so to do staccato exercise. So this time I'll just play it and uh, sort of coach you through it um, without me singing. Here we go. One, two, ready, and good breath. Good breath. Nice staccato. Good breath. Good breath. Couple more. Last one. This next exercise, number six, will also be a descending soul to do, may we follow you exercise. But instead of a staccato articulation, we're now going to go for a lengthier legato articulation in which we put four beats on each one of the pitches, like this. One of the things that you can add to this uh, exercise are those hand signs that we talked about earlier, it's like this. May we follow you. Here we go. One, two, ready, and. Step. May we follow you. We'll do one more. May we follow So this time we will repeat the sol to do legato may we follow you exercise, but this time we'll go a lot um, farther in terms of extending our range. I will play the accompaniment and coach you through to give you and your singers an opportunity to connect with, with this and do it independently. And again, think about the a, the e, the a, the o, and the oo. Here we go. One, two, ready, and.
Take a breath, modulate, and. Modulate. Modulate and good breath, modulate and. Modulate, good breath, and. Modulate, good breath, and. Let's do a couple more. Last one. This next exercise is a diction exercise I created and hopefully it'll appear in my next Choir Builders book. And it's simply built on the alphabet, the ABCs. So I'm going to chant the letters to you in rhythm as I snap. And then as I tap, that will be your opportunity to respond and to sort of fill in the blanks. So we get to do a little bit of call and response here. So here's our B and repeat after me. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, your turn. My turn. H I J K L M N O P. Q R S T U V. W X Y N Z. Now let's do more. A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P. Your turn. T R S T U V W X Y N Z. I'll do the whole thing. A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y N Z. Your turn. This is a really good exercise for helping your singers articulate consonants with clarity. That A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. That kind of action really gets the articulators going and it will help your singers to work toward precision in articulating and clearly communicating those consonants. For this new diction song, based on the ABCs, we're going to use the same sol to do pattern that we've been using for some of our other exercises. And just to recap, we have this A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, N, Z. We want to keep that nice, crisp articulation. And the melody goes like this. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, N, Z. Okay? Let's try it together again. One, two, here we go. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, 
W, X, Y, and Z. Your turn. My turn. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Your turn. This next exercise is from my first Choir Builders book and it is entitled Diction Understood. It's another exercise that is designed to really work the articulators and to get singers to crisply articulate uh, those consonants. So it goes like this. If I want my diction to be clear and understood, lips and teeth and tip of tongue will help it to be good. I often will teach this as a call and response activity. So something like having the students keep a beat and then repeating after me. If I want my diction to be clear and understood, your turn. My turn. Lips and teeth and tip of tongue will help it to be good. My turn. If I want my diction to be clear and understood, lips and teeth and tip of tongue will help it to be good. Go. So this piece starts in the key of D major and it goes like this. The melody goes, if I want my diction to be clear and understood, lips and teeth and tip of tongue will help it to be good. I'll do it again. If I want my diction to be clear and understood, lips and teeth and tip of tongue will help it to be good. I'll do it again. If I want my diction to be clear and understood, lips and teeth and tip of tongue will help it to be good.